We're joined on Kelly TV by our new head of football operations and Kelly Hall of Fame inductee, James Fowler. James, thank you very much for taking the time out. Thank you. Day one is in the bag. Um, first of all, tell me, how did your first day go? What, what was it entailing? Yeah, it was it was busy. It, probably, it flew in probably without me actually doing much work, uh, just kind of getting about the staff, uh, catching up with some old faces, introduced myself to obviously the manager and, and his staff as well. I uh, had a discussion with them over lunch, so uh, it was a, a really good first day. What does it feel like to be back? You've obviously walked out the tunnel already. Okay, it's stubbed in the ground when you've done it, but how does it feel walking back out there and, and being back at the club? Yeah, it probably feels like being home, if I'm being honest. I spent, obviously, I think 17 years here as a as a player, so uh, I've obviously been away for a few years, but it's probably always felt like my club as well, just because of uh, the time I spent here, the, the good times that I had, the people that I met, obviously the, the support that I got from the fans as well. So, yeah, delighted to be back. We look back at your career at Kilmarnock, I think you you in excess of 400 appearances, you scored 10 times for the club, we mentioned that you're a Hall of Fame in, inductee as well, and another thing that I've noticed as well, you're actually the record appearance holder for the old Scottish Premier League as well, so a, a very well Kent face, and clearly someone as well that's got the club at heart. Yeah, uh, and I, obviously I think that potentially helped get me get me the, the interview as well as we, as we kind of progressed, and that was something that obviously I was... Uh, I wouldn't use the, the term Kelly legend, but obviously I've I spent a lot of my career here, uh, and I say I've got a, a real connection with it with the club and the fans. So uh, I'm delighted to be back, and uh, really looking forward to to the opportunity. Now it's obviously kind of no secret that your previous co-manager has went to another uh, club in Scotland. But when the job became available here at Kilmarnock, just how much of an attraction was it for you? Yeah, it was actually. I came here to uh, to watch a game. Uh, I think I was probably still at Sunderland, but with a free weekend. But that was after the manager had left, so I was thinking, yeah, I'm likely to leave as well when a new management team comes in there. Uh, and then I spoke to a couple of people, kind of in the board here, and they were asking what my my next step was going to be. Uh, and I said I was kind of open to to looking at all avenues. Uh, they said that there was a job coming up, and if it was something that I was interested in, they would they would like me to put my my CV forward and and discuss it further. Uh, and, and that really excited me when, when I heard that uh, and it was something that it probably took off pretty quickly from then. Well that, that kind of leads me nicely. We, we spoke to, to Billy Bowie on Killy TV a couple of months ago just at the start of this process looking for a new head of football operations and he had said that the board wouldn't be rushed into this and it was very much a case of finding the right candidate. How kind of rigorous was the process for you? Yeah, so I spoke to the board twice. Uh, I was asked, obviously, first of all, to put my CV in. Then I got told I'd been selected for for interview. Uh, got asked to do a, a presentation in, in terms of where I seen the club being just now, how I seen it moving forward. Uh, so went and done that. Felt it went okay. Got positive feedback on the day, uh, and then just got asked to to go meet the board again uh, on the on the Monday. So it was kind of over the weekend. I think they'd kind of had a look at all the the candidates uh, and then as I say went to meet them again on the Monday just to probably from their aspect firm up a, a few things uh, and then kind of from then on they, they kind of offered me the job so as I say it was tough that, that presentation aspect of it was uh, not necessarily natural for me I'm relatively okay in, in terms of doing presentations and powerpoints but when you go into an interview process it's, it's a slightly different challenge uh, but as I say it was probably hopefully well received by, by the board hopefully I've got some good ideas uh, and then that was, as I say, the Monday, and then to get offered the job uh, pretty soon after that, uh, it was it was something that I was I was really keen to accept. You're clearly a man that can that can handle the pressure. Uh, obviously, you look back at your great career at Kilmarnock, but of course, what's sitting off to just off your side is the the 2012 uh, League Cup, which you won. A lot of pressure that day as well. Is different type of pressure you're going to be under now? Do you think? Yeah, because obviously, as I say, heading up the football department, the responsibility that that brings. Uh, but speaking to the board, I think it's it's a job that I've not had uh, before. It's a pretty clean slate. I think I can see round about the place that the good work that Billy, Phyllis and, and Cathy have done uh, at the club as well already. And, and they've said that they're going to support me uh, wherever, I, wherever I need that. Uh, so that's great to know that, that they're behind me as well and they've, they've appointed somebody that they think has got the, the vision to move the club forward. In the same interview that, that Billy and I had had on, on Killy TV that we'd had with him, he had also said basically that, as you were mentioning, there'll be a clean slate, it's a job we've never had before, but 
he also said that the, the candidate at the time coming in will basically look over and oversee everything to do with football and I'm assuming knowing the kind of guy you are it will not be a case of looking over you'll be bringing everyone together and, and just overseeing everything and pulling everyone together. What, yeah. Also, what will the job be entailing for you? Yeah, so I suppose it was kind of doing a, a, a written branch review as well and, and seeing what's what's been good at the club recently. It's worked, they've had success, made it back into Europe, so uh, it's not like it's in the doldrums and it's, it's needing a complete overhaul, but there's obviously going to be areas within that uh, that we, we can improve on. Uh, Greg Taylor obviously left in the summer and that's something that the club's been renowned for over the years is, yeah. is bringing through their, their youth players. So that will be one part of the job in making sure that that pathway is there from academy uh, into the first team as well. So I think that's that's really important for the club the size of Kilmarnock. One, fans love to see academy products coming through, local lads playing in the team. But two, just obviously from a business model, it's important that obviously you can try and get the players through, give them an opportunity to, to show what they can do. Uh, and then sell them on as well, and this is that keeps the, the club ticking over. Recruitment will be obviously another large part of that. I don't think there's really been too much uh, emphasis placed on kind of probably a long-term strategy of recruitment from the club. So that's important that we put things in place uh, because managers change probably so often these days. As I've, yeah. I've found out myself, that you try to have that probably thread throughout the club and the plan that you say right, if the manager changes, it's not a complete overhaul of the squad. So then you try to find potentially a, a philosophy is a, a big word and can mean lots of different things but probably for me principles of play things that you can see within the academy that can do into the first team where a manager can be pretty flexible in terms of your formation uh, or, or the squad that he has but you've kind of got that key attributes within that uh, that, that's kind of let's say it's no matter who the manager is going to be if it's a youth team playing there's a there's a way that you can see that the, the club is going to get success does that mean then when you look at, obviously we're talking about the academy and like you say we all love seeing players coming through, when it comes to transfer windows in the winter or in the summer then you obviously have to get players in that will complement the, the young players coming through. Does that mean then that we're going to start looking at a, a player profile per se? You're talking about philosophy, style of play. Do we need, need to recruit players that suit the way that the boys are coming through the academy or, and, and marry it up or can they have slightly different attributes and and merge that in, is that something you'll be looking at? Yeah, as I say, it's, it's a broad range of things as well. I think if you've got good players within the academy and, and you see them coming through, then it's important that the pathway is there. So you're not necessarily thinking we need to go and sign a player on a three-year deal. Can you push that player through or is it a short-term fix you need within the first team to then uh, allow the younger ones to come through and then recruiting out with, whether that's at 18s or the reserves to allow them to come through and maybe they just need a little bit more of an opportunity and some coaching to then be ready for the first team. And then just in the first team in general, is yeah, you're, ideally you've got a profile of a player that you would like uh, and that'll come and I'll speak to, to Angelo and uh, the other staff in the football department. So it, it definitely narrows down what you're looking for. There's so many players out there, agents will just throw throw names at you and it's quite easy to dismiss these, these players if, if you know what you're looking for. Uh, obviously throughout the, the team there's, there's different profiles for different positions so that's something that we need to firm up moving forward but it definitely helps the recruitment process when you've got an idea of, of, of what you're looking for. Does that then streamline it then if you're saying it'll help will it kind of cut down on on time and or wasting time on maybe players that like you say will have been flung at us before that really aren't really going to cut the mustard for Kilmarnock? Yeah well, I think you, you see some big clubs in England and they could have 10 or 15 potential full-time analysts and recruitment staff. Uh, we don't have that at Kilmarnock, just the size of the club and where we are, but as I say, if you can recruit smart, then that definitely helps as well. And it's uh, I've got things in mind that I would like to implement and some people that I would probably like to add to the staff that, that I respect their opinion. Uh, I know because it's, it's, it's a, a big job. It is, there's, there's lots of games and lots of players to, to see as well, so it's important that you get the right people in and you target the right areas. Uh, and, and you get value for money when you're recruiting as well. So it's a complete overhaul as well, effectively, of the scouting network that we've got. Yeah, and, and to be honest, I've been in, obviously, yesterday and, and this morning, and I don't think there's much in the recruitment department. I know there's been bits and bobs done, but I think, obviously, the way that it's been ran so far is there's not really been anybody in charge, and it's kind of been left to drift. So, yeah, I'll head up that now. Uh, hopefully I can get other ones in place that are going to support my role in that, because I've... It's not just recruitment that I've, I've got this job for as well. There's different aspects of it, but recruitment's a big part. And obviously there's a transfer window coming up, so we need to make sure that we're, we're organised and, uh, and ready for that. 
just how then as well the experience that you've got you, you've you've got a lot of experience and at a really high level Sunderland are a, a massive club potentially sleeping giant where they are at the moment you guys have you guys have done well down there so there's obviously a lot of experience to draw from there but do you see parallels to that and to your time at Queen of the South and, and St Mirren as well? Yeah I think it's probably good for me and the club that I've worked at different levels I think Queen of the South the, there was young boys came through and they got sold on I think there was four left in my, after my first year there they went for money and a fifth went in a, in a uh, freedom of contract so that was good there was a pathway but then it was about recruiting younger players within that budget and a few of the players are still Jordan Marshall's ones went to Dundee Dan Brownlee they're still there because it was kind of recruiting in an eye for an 18, 19 year old that's got potential and coming through uh, obviously then St Mirren it was I don't know, we kind of laugh about that still because it was a kind of roll of the dice and there was like 11 out I think in the January and 11 in and it's, it's a massive amount of numbers to turn around but I think the club found itself bottom of the league and we had to do something pretty drastic and I worked really closely with, with Jack in terms of that side of it so you were kind of one in and, or sorry one out and then one in just working within the budget uh, and we had success doing that and obviously then on for the back of that we managed to get promotion the following season so uh, and then probably at St Mernet as well, it was about the right types. So we had a, a decent knowledge of the players' ability, but it was actually finding out that there were the right ones coming in the building, and we found that balance. Uh, and obviously then Sunderland was a completely different challenge. That The money that was there for when we first went in uh, was like a premiership wage bill as well, just yeah. where the club found itself. So you're trying to manage players that are, that are 20, 30, 40,000 pounds a week, and that, that was totally different to anything that I had experienced as a player or uh, as a coach. But I think we embraced it. I think the manager had done great, and I, obviously I, I would uh, back myself in terms of supporting him uh, where he needed it. Uh, that was a different challenge, and then recruitment, try to reduce the wage bill at Sunderland as well. So you're you're trying to find solutions for for the players that you've got that potentially didn't want to be there, and then you're trying to recruit ones and finding that balance that players were were earning still good money, but not anywhere near what some of the other players were earning in the squad. So see, it's trying to manage that group, uh, and within that. You get lots of names and uh, contacts thrown at us because it was Sunderland was a massive club throughout Europe uh, and I've still got the contacts and yeah, it might not be the same players that, that Sunderland are looking at but the contacts are there within agents that will have other players and we'll be throwing it wide to, to see who's available for Kilmarnock. You mentioned the transfer window approaching in January, James. Just how important is it then to recruit properly then? Do we need to recruit? Are there, you, you hear fans talking about maybe areas in the team that we maybe need to strengthen. The manager maybe has, has alluded to that before or on Kelly TV. Have you got targets in mind already? Yeah, I think ideally in the recruitment of players, you're probably working two transfer windows ahead. Yeah. Uh, just coming in so late and close to this window, speaking at the interview process, the board had obviously had initial discussions with, with the manager in, in areas that he thought needed to be strengthened. So, yeah, there's been a, a couple of areas so far, and then I had some more uh, discussions with, with the manager yesterday and, and areas that he sees. So it's so working together, try to find a balance, try to find players within budget. And I think, even from my experience, January can be a difficult window. Uh, the, the players are available for a reason, and that yeah. might be that, yeah, they're not playing somewhere else, but and then they're lacking fitness, whatever that may be. So uh, it's something that we'll, we'll work closely together on. Uh, and as I say, planning for the summer window as well but the main focus just now needs to be with kind of like a month or five weeks to mm -hmm. to this window is, is really important that we get players in and I think the sooner you can get them in the better I think sometimes January can be a January the 30th and late in the month and bringing players in at the last minute but you see there's there's the break at the start of January so that'll be a good opportunity to try and get the players in and then they'll have a a kind of week's training as well with with the squad before the games begin again. That's effectively then what we spoke about a minute ago. Your player profile allows you to do is, is bring players in quicker, smarter, and get them integrated with the team a lot quicker. Yeah, and it's it's probably known what you've already got in the building. So try to see obviously what's in uh, in the reserves team with Andy Mellon, what's in the eighteens. Uh, can any of them kind of push up and, and kick on? Uh, and then obviously just the first team, you're always looking to see what's what's worked this season. Obviously, there's been a few injuries, I know, as well. So, where do we need to strengthen, uh, have cover and have competition for places? I think that's always great that you've got competition. It means players are always always on their toes. And if they're doing well, they play. And if they're not, they know that there's, there's somebody else that's, that's got good quality that's ready to come in and, and take their place. 